I've said for all the years I've done this, um, your guests are your show, and I've said again, you're blessed by your guests, and I've had some incredible guests here today. I think what you're doing is pretty fun. Well, so we're going to, De Denise, I'm just going to give you an intro because we're just starting with you. <laughs> <laughs> And that's perfectly okay. I just, I, I, I love the enthusiasm. A little bit of an intro for uh, Denise Pence Bookovar, who's been in the theatrical profession for a very long time as, uh, um, let me get this right, you've been an actor, you've been on a soap opera, you've been in musical productions, and you've been on radio, and uh, I, uh, and, and I'm just going to preface this, Denise, by just giving you my own uh, experience. My dad, as you know, uh, worked in Broadway shows, and uh, you talk about an up-and-down <laughs> experience. <laughs> it definitely is. I think coming into New York was, uh, you know, you're just, it's a wing and a prayer. You never know what's going to unfold. And when I look back, I like go, how the hell did that happen? <laughs> Mm -hmm. because the Al and Christine characters on the line were fashioned after my husband and myself. Wow. Mainly because we were in the thick of the Broadway community at the time. Mm -hmm. I was doing Pippin. I can't remember what Steve was doing at the time. But, yeah, we were, we were gypsies. And I came in and auditioned for a Broadway show, The Rothschild, back in 1970. I was in New York like two weeks, and I ended up on Broadway, and it just changed my life. And that was so that, that was, was Hal Linden, right? One chapter, and then leaving Pippin, I was, you know, focused on being the actress, straight actress. Didn't know what that decision would entail, but that was a big transition, and I ended up on the soaps, which was another whole life-changing experience because I had two children, I got a house, I had responsibilities for, as an adult, and that, you know, became another whole level of my life. Now I'm into, like, well, Gatewave Radio is really where I started. I came out of, um, I auditioned for In Touch Networks, which was a broadcast reading service for the blind. And they would take professional actors and we would read copy for, you know, giving news and information to the public through the right. radio, which was so bizarre because that's like a circle back to Guiding Light, where, which started in the radio, right? And so I've always, I've built up this love of working on the radio and the amount of people that you can reach through the radio. What you're doing, I don't know how you developed this little morning show, but... Good morning to your, commu to your commuters. I hope they're not driving in the snow up there. Right now we're okay. You know, of course it's New England, and uh, you never know what you're going to get from moment to moment. <laughs> no, you don't. We're supposed to go up and see my daughter for Thanksgiving, and my husband's already having driving fear for the snow that's going to happen tomorrow morning. But uh, in the meantime, Gateway Radio has, has been my outlet for reaching the public that I don't see anymore because I'm not on, on national television at this time, although I do have a new agent, and who knows where my next chapter is going to take me. So Gateway Radio is something I would love your readers to try and find. The local networks can buy into Gateway and share some of the programming. My program is the Cinematic Arts. It airs on Thursday mornings. Uh, 11 and again at 5 in the afternoon and I kind of I read the copy from the, uh, Entertainment Weekly but and it, interestingly enough I never used to read Entertainment Weekly so the only kind of news and information I got in the industry came from my being in the industry mm -hmm. if you know what I mean yeah. now I'm getting all sorts of Hollywood information and I kind of couple that information with my own personal background to you know, with the talent and the struggles that Hollywood delivers, and it's kind of an interesting program that I've kind of made my own. Which is really neat, and you know, what, and, and just in, in our discussions and, and in our, um, you know, going back and forth and putting the show together, what got you involved with this whatever you want to call it, a wonderful business, a crazy business, a heartbreaking business, I'm sure it's all three. in El Paso, Texas, and I remember in high school I was always thinking, there's got to be something more. Mm 
mm-hmm. than this. You know, I mean, I had a very safe childhood at the time. It was not the kind of volatile border town that it is now. But there wasn't all that much culture. I can't say I went to the theater a lot in El Paso. I was a member of the civic ballet there. And what I discovered uh, years later was Ingeborg Heuser, who was my ballet teacher and ran the civic ballet, was a member of the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, and she kept her life during the during Hitler's time mm-hmm. because she was a prima ballerina for Hitler. Now, I didn't know this, and when she was, um, you know, much older and... Hi, we seem to have lost Denise. We'll try to get her back in a moment. Uh, after our technical difficulty, so sorry about that. Um, we were talking about the theatrical profession and the ups and the downs and the... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how much you heard about uh, Ingeborg Heuser and the Civic Ballet. That's where we cut off. <laughs> yeah, that's about where we got caught off. But that was the beginning. I mean, Ingeborg was an amazing ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. We learned all of the original mm-hmm. choreography from all of the main ballets. It was in a growing up experience that I was really fortunate to move into. And my going to the North Carolina School of the Arts, I auditioned as a dancer and I was it was a fluke. I didn't know you could have a career in the arts, you know? <laughs> so going there kind of led to my coming to New York and my first goal was very simple. I wonder if they'll ever pay me to dance. And within two weeks that happened. So I thought, okay, I got to I got a place in this business. I just have to figure out what it is. So that's, you know, it's, I, it's been leading me into different places. Um, right now, my husband and I, we own a, com- a company called History Alive. We take professional actors into the schools, mostly in Connecticut. I was sharing that, yeah. Of Connecticut. And we have historically accurate um, presentations. Uh, one actor will provide like Two for Freedom does two different characters, Jack Arabus and uh, and Frederick Douglass. And we're actually going to be up there. There's this wonderful guy, Lee Paris, who is in my database for the schools. And he's organized a lot of teachers up in the New Haven area to come see a teaser of History Live on December 17th at 6 p.m. And... I think you can get more information about that through young audiences of Connecticut up there. If there are teachers out there, history teachers, social studies, English, we collaborate with them. I was doing that this week. I was watching the link that you had sent me, and I was entirely fascinated with it. Yeah, it's pretty fabulous. It's a, it's a kind of an upgrade from your usual teaching artist, you know, who deals with children. It's a very educational, theatrical presentation. The, the actors we use have to, have to really have their acting chops about them. I mean, you can't use an actor who wants to just do television. You have to have a theater actor who really can hold an audience, and children are sometimes the hardest audience. My husband works with um, New Haven, is he a New Haven writer, Steve? Uh, Steve Opanowski lives in Stratford. That's where he lives. He's, mm-hmm. uh, he's our writer. He does the research. He creates the monologue. And then my husband infuses it with theater, uh, music, and humor, and all of that. The costume. We have very minimal it was really a lot of fun to watch. We work with the uh, teacher so that the presentation of the actor is in tandem with their curriculum at the time. So if anybody goes to the website, historyaliveny.com, they can see the different characters that are uh, available, and they can call up young audiences of Connecticut and book us. And in our closing moments, um, you've been in the business for a long time. You've worked all corners of it. Um, but I'm only 35. I don't know how that happens, that it could be so long. <laughs> what, what, what is your... I am an old war horse here. Well, I, I wouldn't I say that. I like to think that I, I'm uh, as sassy as I used to be. Well, what's your counsel to those that are starting this business? You know, discipline, perseverance, talent is almost the last thing on the rung. You know, I'm beginning to realize that social media and being able to outreach and bring in people who like-minded people. I have such a great network of people around me. Um, 
I'm involved with another co organization of women called the Rehearsal Club Women, which if you go to rehearsalclubnyc.com, you'll read all about what we've been doing. And we came together in 2006. It used to be a theatrical residence that was in mm -hmm. New York. That's how I came into New York, with this safe haven. I had a cop. And I <laughs> into a support group of like-minded peers that was just phenomenal. Fantastic. And I look at social media the same way. You have your friends that are supporting you, helping you, sharing information. And that's what we do in social media. And well, it's, it's, it's how you and I met, and uh, believe it or not, we're out of time. I'm so happy you were able to set aside this time to be with us Thank today. Thank you for and having me, Tony. I really appreciate the outreach, and uh, who knows where it'll go. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll consider, uh, you know, so many things in this show get into so many fabrics, and I'd like to have you back again to perhaps talk about something completely different, but uh, things of uh, which you no doubt have had a lot of experience with. Thanks so much, Denise. Thank you. Have a good one. Be safe driving. Uh, thank you. Really appreciate it. You too. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Bye -bye. Thanksgiving to you as well. And that was Denise Pence, Book of Art. And uh, we will be back in a moment with our closing remarks. And uh, great to have you here in this 1125-2014 edition on Connecticut Morning from New Haven, Connecticut. Stay tuned. Don't go away.